Mr. Revolver Guy here with DayAtTheRange.com. This is a follow-up video for 300BlackTalk.com, the premier forum for anything and everything related to the 300 Blackout cartridge. Join the forum, listen, learn, and contribute. Today, I separated some 300 Blackout cartridges or cases all head stamped WCC 2012. So I will be using the same case with three different loadings, all loaded with Remington bench rest small rifle primers. The first load will consist of 11 grains of CFE black, 300 blackout powder underneath the 220 grain berry spire point bullet. The overall cartridge length will be 2.250. As you can see here, the CFE black powder looks very closely to H110. I am not saying that it is H110 powder. I know for a fact for it to be different and have different burning characteristics as the H110 powder. Powder. I'm simply describing here the look of the powder and the consistency of the powder. As everyone knows, H110 powder is very easy to measure or throw in your powder measure. And CFE Black has that same consistency and throws the same, very consistent. The next round I will load will be with 11.5 grains of CFE black powder. And by the way, I measured or weighed the CFE black powder on two different powder scales, the RCBS 505 balance beam scale as well as the Hornady digital scale. And as we can see here, the redding dies makes it very consistent 300 blackout rounds. As you can see, the rounds with 11.5 grains of CFE black powder has an overall cartridge length of 2.251. Then I threw 10 rounds of 300 blackout with 12 grains of CFE black powder, again being weighed on the two different scales, the RCBS 505 and the Hornady digital scale. And again, the redding dies are making very consistent ammo, as you can see here, as the 12 grain the overall cartridge length is 2.250. Again, all of these rounds, 10 rounds, will be fired from 50 yards from the Ruger American Ranch rifle and also the AR-15 rifle. All have been loaded with CFE black powder using Remington number seven and a half small rifle bench rest primers. All of my loads were tested and measured for consistency with the 300 blackout Sheridan case gauge, ensuring that they would chamber and both of the rifles that I would have on the range with me today. I would not load this round, as a matter of fact, I haven't loaded any other rounds without having a Sheridan case gauge for it. It is a tool that I live by. It is proven to be worth the cost. They're not all that expensive, but to me and for my loading practices, they are worth their weight in gold. And there you can see the 220 grain spire point loaded in the 300 blackout case. So let's head out to the range and see what we can 
achieve across the chronograph for consistency and on the target for accuracy. As you can see, we're finally out on the range on the 50 yard line where we're gonna test the rounds loaded with CFE black powder and the berries 220 grain spire point and 300 blackout. We're gonna test the three different loads with the Ruger American Ranch rifle loaded or chambered and 300 blackout. I also have my AR chambered and 300 blackout. We're gonna test for accuracy while also shooting these loads across the chronograph. Let's see if I can keep them on target and have a little fun. Well guys, <laughs> I uh, really made a bonehead move today. I have my chronograph with me, but the battery's dead. And I don't have another nine volt. So today we'll be just testing for accuracy of these loads We'll load up another 30 rounds and shoot them across the chronograph to see what results get turned in. And at a later date, we'll load these on dayattherange.com under the link Journey with 300 Blackout, where I have blogged or vlogged all of my learnings for one of my favorite rounds, the 300 Blackout. So stick with me. Let's see what we can do for accuracy today from the 50 yard line. With the Ruger American Ranch Rifle at 50 yards and 11 grains of CFE Black, the accuracy is abysmal. Just in case you're wondering, this is an SWFA 20 power scope. I know way more than I need for this rifle. I was testing this rifle out to 200 yards, uh, which is the reason I have this scope on it. Uh, really testing myself at 300 yards uh, to see what I can do with it. But again, accuracy with the 11 grain loads of CFE Black, it really is abysmal. I'm really disappointed in berries and also CFE Black, the combination thereof. Now we'll move on to the 11.5 grain load with the Ruger American Ranch Rifle. Okay, with CFE Black and 11.5 grains, the groups did tighten up a little bit more. Now we're gonna move on to the 12 grain load. Uh, and I will take the camera down range for us to see the accuracy. I'm still not really impressed with any of it thus far. Keep in mind, I'm testing the 12 grain load next. And according to the Hodgson manual, uh, annual manual, uh, the max grain or max load is 12.1 grains for a 220 grain projectile. 
So we're going to try the 12 grain loads next and uh, see what the accuracy looks like. So far, not impressed. Okay, five rounds with 12 grains of CFE black under the Berry's 220 grain spire point. Though still not impressed for 50 yards, the group did tighten up a little bit. Considering though, with this makeup at 200 yards, I have held four rounds on an index card at 200 yards. I'm still not overly impressed uh, with this combination, not at all. Now we'll move on to the AR. Now we have the AR loaded with five rounds, CFE black powder, 11 grains under the 220 grain spire point. This is a weaver scope on top, um, dialed in to 10 power, again at 50 yards. Let's see how we do. Again, with 11 grains of CFE black powder under Barry's 220 grain spire point, not impressed. I had two rounds off the target totally. A um, little disappointed with how this is going today, but still yet fun. And we'll see uh, what 11.5 grains will give us. We're back now with CFE black, 11.5 grains, five rounds. And also, I failed to mention, 11 grains did lock the bolt back completely in the AR. So to see if he black or Hodgson's claim to fame, see if he black will work with an AR. Though this does have a pistol length gas tube. So now let's test 11.5 grains. Eleven point five grains in the AR. The group did tighten up pretty well. Uh, this is a for those wondering. This is a one in seven twist CMMG barrel. Uh, it did tighten up pretty good downrange at fifty yards. Again, we'll take the camera down and show you each of the groups. Now we're going to move on to twelve grains of CFE black powder with two hundred twenty grain berry spire point.
Again, for 50 yards with CFE black, 12 grains, 220 grain spire point berries, I'm really not all that impressed. I guess it could be used for a good plinking round, uh, but we'll take the camera down range and uh, show you the shots and see how they came out. Uh, I can see with the scope, of course. Uh, sorry to be a downer in this video, probably one of the first I've made where I'm not really excited about how things turned out. Just not really impressed, especially for the price. I don't uh, like to bash products, if you will, but these berries uh, manufactured 220 grain bullets, at least in my two rifles, the Ruger American Ranch rifle and this AR, just not up to par from an accuracy, accuracy perspective with CFE black powder. We're downrange with the targets now. As you can see, eight inch bullseyes. The targets on the left was fired with the Ruger American Ranch rifle. The targets on the right was fired with the AR. This is the first target from the Ruger American Ranch rifle. This was 11 grains of CFE black powder with berries 220 grain spire point. Then we increased the load up to 11.5 grains. Group, not so bad. 11.5 grains of CFE black with the 220 grain berry spire point. Then we increase the load up to 12 grains. And as you can see there, 12 grains shot a little high, but the group tightened up tremendously with the Ruger American Ranch rifle, 12 grains of CFE black powder under the 220 grain berry spire point. Over here, we went with the 11 grains with the AR-15 of CFE black powder, 11 grains of CFE black powder, 220 grain berry spire point. Then we up the grain to 11.5 grains of CFE black powder, 220 grain berry spire point. And then we went up to 12 grains with the AR-15. And as you can see there again, it did tighten up quite a bit with 12 grains. Mr. Revolver Guy with dayatherange.com.